Hi everyone, welcome to Cryptoware and today we'll be talking about dynamic analysis. Uh, please go through the previous videos if you haven't so that you can easily move ahead with the with the dynamic dynamic analysis. So we'll just be talking about the simplest parts like the tools and why is it necessary and later on we will do the practicals of it. So let's get started. So dynamic analysis is nothing but examining the malicious file while we are executing it. So in the previous video, we did discuss about static analysis where we are analyzing that file, but we are not running it. So whatever information that we could extract from that particular file without running it is static analysis. This time we are running that file and we are monitoring the behavior. We're examining each and every step that is happening over there using some set of tools. So this is dynamic analysis. How is this happening? So we are analyzing the behavior. How does the malware behave? So this gives us an idea of the goal of the malware. What is it trying to achieve? What is it trying to do? Some functions or dynamic library that it is calling. Of course, we must have figured out some of the libraries or the function calls that the malware has done during static analysis. But in dynamic analysis, we would be able to connect those dots and this would make it clear while understanding how is it happening. As I mentioned that we are trying to analyze the behavior. We are trying to understand what kind of connection or how is it making a connection to an external server. What do I mean by an external server? Either it is connecting to a malicious link, which is trying to uh, download some other malicious files into your system, into your device, or maybe it is connect, uh, getting connected to a CNC server, which we discussed in our uh, in the previous videos, like command and control server. So we are trying to analyze that. How is it making those connections? When is it trying to make that connection? Also, there's some uh, rest of the suspicious activities that are happening in the device. So we are analyzing each and every kind of activity that is that would be happening after running that particular malicious file. So we will get acquainted with all these things, with all these details, all the kind of behaviors while running it in, in our later videos while performing the practical. Now some of the tools that we would require like Propmon, which will help you in monitoring the behavior in real time. Why am I mentioning real time? Because we are running the malware for, its, for, for performing its analysis. Proc dot, whatever information that we would be extracting from uh, through Procmon, which is process monitor. So it will just connect those dots and provide a visual representation to us so that it becomes easier for us to analyze the behavior of the malware. Regshot, it will help you in performing or uh, uh, yeah, performing a comparison between uh, when the system was infected and when the system was not infected. So we'll be checking what kind of registry keys were formed after the malicious file was executed, uh, what kind of libraries created, what kind of libraries it is connecting to, what new files got created into the system, what new connections it was trying to make. So we will be analyzing those things. We'll be able to make those comparisons and this makes it easier for us to understand how is the malicious file running into our system. Fake net, it actually provides you a fake network so that the malware believes that it is present in an, uh, it is infecting an actual victim uh, device. So we are creating a fake internet environment for the malware so that it will try to connect or uh, uh, it will try to make connections with those CNC servers or other external servers. O obviously, uh, there will be no response coming from the servers, but the connection will be made from the malware's end. So they will believe that it is happening. Wireshark, whenever we are, uh, uh, whenever we are monitoring the network of the malware, uh, Wireshark will make it easier for uh, analyzing that um, network, that connections that it is making. Uh, you can, there are different tools that you can use for storing uh, whichever 
uh, connections that are happening, network connections. For example, uh, whenever you're trying to save the logs, whenever you, sorry, save the logs uh, generated from fake net, you can store it in .pcap extension, which is used in uh, Wireshark. So you can open those in Wireshark and you can check the connectivities. How is it happening? What kind of URL or IP addresses it is getting connected to and what kind of details are being shared? What kind of details the malware is asking for from that particular external server? So again, the analysis is not just limited to these tools. You can use different kinds of tools. You can use different kinds of commands. You may not require all of them, but of course, if you are performing dynamic analysis, you have to set up a virtual environment for the malware so that it behaves uh, exactly the way it is supposed to behave when it infects an actual system. So you have to set up that environment for the malware to get executed and it becomes easier for you to analyze as well. So that's it for today's video. We'll be learning about the rest of the, uh, the rest of the things related to malware analysis in our upcoming sessions. Slowly, we will move ahead with the practicals. So thank you so much and see you in the next video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.